then there's the show. You're listening to Inside Real Estate, where we go deep into the minds uh, that, uh, of real estate from London? professionals. Yeah. Where'd you get somebody Two, from London? One. London, yeah. to do your intro. Yeah, we, we, we got that. You see that? Oh, you like sweet. That? Yeah. How much do you have to pay to get somebody from London to do it? Not as much bucks. as you would think. <laughs> yeah, not as much as you would think. Uh, what's up, everyone? Uh, we are Inside Real Estate. We've got myself, Paul Paslakis, your host. Your, uh, we got our co-host, Mr. Salvatore Cusimano. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. You're I'm doing d- good. D- looks nice again. <laughs> All right. Short circuit. We've got uh, Brad Weisgerber, who's our operations guy. Uh, he just keeps showing up. Uh, he looks. He's dressed up today. He wore a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's laughing. Man. It's got a little fringe on it or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That it's, thing is about 14 up. years old, man. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. beat up. You should, this is the best he looks ever, by the way. Not true. Uh, we've got Andy Dirks uh, from Berkshire Hathaway. A lot of you probably know him from playing for the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Detroit? Detroit, that's how we say it, bro. Way to say it. How do you, you say it? How Detroit? You say it? Detroit? It's, it's the Detroit, bro. It's Detroit. Detroit. Tomato, tomato. I mean, you, I mean, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> so, so, Andy, thank you for being on the show. How are you today? Good, good. Thanks for having yeah. me, guys. So, Andy, obviously, uh, was a professional athlete. At one point in my yeah. life. Uh, one point. I mean, you still yeah. look good, though, man. Yeah, you, I've gained you, a little weight. You look svelte. I've gained a little weight. Yeah, you're but the best looking dude in this building right now, <laughs> <laughs> which isn't saying much, actually. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so obviously, yeah. So you went from uh, you know playing professional sports to going into real estate. So I want to talk a little bit about that transition and what you see as far as similarities, and you know what it takes to succeed in a new industry like that. And I'm sure there's some things that do cross over and some things that don't. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, refinances are at an 18-year low um, yeah. w- and what the fallout from that's going to be. Uh, I also want to talk about, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about inventory, how tight it is. Obviously, that's just such a big topic. It gets, you know, we talk about it a lot, but I just kind of want to still talk about how we navigate that because we get a lot of questions about it. Um, so let's go into Andy. Andy, give us a little bit about your background, man. How did you get uh, over to Berkshire? I know you're in Kansas. You, you, you married a girl from Michigan. Bloomfield Hills, yeah, that Michigan. Ma- that yeah. makes you move sometimes. Yeah, and we got two kids, one on the way. Yeah, uh, okay. you got congratulations, another one on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah, so it's going to be kids. wild. Oh. We'll have three under three, pretty much. You're nuts, man. man. But yeah, Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> great. It's a. Uh, I interviewed at a few in in, uh, in the area, and Berkshire Hathaway. Just I like the broker there. Uh, yeah, seemed like a very good fit. They also have very accessible agents that are. A little deeper into the business. Yeah. When I when you, when you first start something, you don't know what to get into. Mm-hmm. What I learned, though, uh, even from my time in baseball, is people who have already done it have knowledge and experience. Yeah, that's right. a good. Yeah, and that's you good get a lot of a lot of people, especially in the real estate realm. Everybody sees the money. They think that they're going to start a team and make all this money uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. Because they see if this guy can do it, surely I can. Well, it's sexy, right? Everybody's it's, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. come in and all, all the TV shows. I'm going <clears> to come <throat> in and make a boatload of money. It's easy, right? Yeah, it's but, not hard. But you have to have the, the experience and knowledge and be willing to put in the work to do what it takes to get mm-hmm. those people who ha- are doing big volumes. They spend a lot of hours doing it. A lot <laughs> of hours, man. You, it's their life. It's all their life is is 24-7 real estate, which right. there's not a problem with that for mm-hmm. people that want to work that much. Right. Yeah, I mean, look, I think uh, you know a lot of misconceptions. I mean, we we work with a lot of different agents, and there's good ones and there's bad ones. And I think, realistically, the ones that d- don't take it too seriously and kind of like think it's just a part time thing, and they're not like really totally into it. Um, it's it's a, it's a it's a grind. I mean, you've got to grind to be successful yeah. in this industry, and real estate's really competitive, in my opinion, right? Especially right now. It, it is, but it isn't. You know, there's parts of it right now. The competition is. A lot of agents getting listings, you know, they're going to cut rate their commission a little bit. We're happening all the time. Which is, to me, strange. Because if you're valuable, I well, mean, what's 3, your value? Three percent isn't right. that much. Is that that's what you're going to get? Then you pay your broker some until you hit your cap. You know, right? But uh, they're just getting the listing to get the listing, which is fine. But at the end of the day, I I always think if I'm going to have value, what is my value? And if I do it for one person, right, I'm going to do it for everybody, right. But then that's kind of the competition that we see. You go to listing appointments and you you straight up get beat because you charge more. That's pretty wild. I mean, I think I think like even for us, right? I mean, people want to shop for the lowest rate or they well, want to they want to pay the least amount of money. You charge the standard, right? And which every, is other people yeah. just coming in. Legally, there's not a standard, right? But you know, three percent, right? Yeah, or six percent. Yeah, so it's that. it's pretty funny to me that you know, I mean, and I guess you can't knock it to a degree, but people need to know what they're getting. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so and that's uh, where you can go through and I can say if I did it, the, the other thing, if you're going to pay a buying agent less commission to bring a buyer, why would they take you to that property instead of a different one? Yeah, dude. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't, as an agent, I take my clients where they want to go. Right. Maybe not everybody does. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's know. It's not a good way to, to build a reputation either. No. You know, if you're not paying full commission to a buyer's agent, I yeah. mean, people talk like, man. Well, if my thing is, if you're going to take the listing at a discount, still give the buyer's agent their their money. Well, why wouldn't you? I mean, because they, they want half their money. They want half everybody's money. It's like, no, 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 man. No. <laughs> yeah. Look, I think there's a certain value. Like, I pay for like better service. I pay me personally, right? Like, I would rather pay a little extra and get like a whole host of good service, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I might shop at Nordstrom sometimes because I know that, man, it's all taken care of. I'm paying a premium to do that. Not everybody wants to do that, but I, I just feel like it's a better way to live. And you, you know, if you have a full service agent, they're going to do way more for you, right? You, yeah. Your expectation level of that performance should be higher. Yeah, and there's there's things, I think, where we're at now with technology, especially social media. Mm-hmm. That's changing the, the way people search for homes. Zillow, so, social media, the websites, right? Yeah. But if, if you're running Facebook ads for right. people, you're helping big time. Because you can, you can essentially somewhat target people who might be interested in that house and all it is is we're trying to get as many qualified buyers through a property in the shortest amount of time possible mm-hmm, create right. create some buzz create some leverage for the seller to get them what most people would say is top dollar when when people put their house on the MLS depending on which market Royal Oak for example is sure very very quick hot at times yeah but when the property is on the market for less than 24 hours it's kind of like, did you really give it a chance to get the most money? Right. Like, Are you it's jumping? Easy work. Yeah. It's easy work as a realtor to, hey, let's post on the MLS. And first offer, full price offer comes in. They accept. They're done. But I, Are you doing your client a, ju- a disservice? Is the client right. really getting the most money in their pocket? Right. I don't know. I mean, I like to think that if the property is not on the market for more than about three or four days, you haven't even tested the market. Right. And if you want to sell quickly, that's great. We can still sell quickly. But let's take her. Let's let's see some offers. What's see a what kind of yeah. action? Because everybody's trying to jump in quickly. The really serious buyers are jumping in quickly, but there's also buyers that maybe they can't get there until Saturday. Well, you know it is funny. I always hear right when we got a buyer going out. You know we're going to try to nab this up. We're going to try to lock it down tonight. You know try to put our best foot forward. But often you know you get that highest and best right. Yeah, yeah. This might be on like a Thursday or Friday, and highest but and best due by Monday at noon, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. it gives the whole weekend for people to put those offers in. But mm-hmm. agents that I talk to seem to scoff at that. Oh, this they're calling is, highest and best, but I'm sure they do the same on their listing, right? Or highest, should. highest and best is, I'm you know it's one of those situations. I advise my buyer what I think the the worth of the property is in this market. Mm-hmm. If they want to go higher, they can. But I'll tell them, I think this is where the property should be. If you if you want to get it, there's different things you can do, such as appraisal protection, things yeah. of that nature. Mm-hmm. If you're a buyer in this market, you have to be prepared to not only say, okay, I might need to do something different with my offer, such as shorter inspection periods, uh, uh, appraisal protection, things like that in, in a hot market. But highest and best, I've had people call highest and best, and we got it under ask price. Right. So it's right. It's like right. it's a leverage that the listing agent's trying to use to entice you entice to more higher. offers. Pressured offers is what I call them. Right. They're like, oh, there's so many people interested in this property. Well, how many offers do you have in hand? Well, none. But three people told us we're gonna they're gonna yeah. write. Well, it's highest and best. It, <laughs> yeah. it, right. If it, until it's in paper and real estate, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah. Nothing. It so what funny. what sets you back to the uh, the discounting commissions right now in this market? Mm-hmm. What do you do to set yourself apart, and what do you do to almost I mean sell? I yourself? spend money. I spend money on listings. But when uh, it comes down to a to a seller, right? How how do you? Why am I worth? Yourself? Why yeah. am I worth? How do you explain your worth? Not to getting them? cut rated. Yeah. yeah. Because if you want somebody that's going to throw it on the MLS, especially in the higher price points. Those properties need to be marketed, and mm-hmm. they need stage. They need to look nice. You can't – a lot of people want to put their $500,000 house on the market without doing anything to it. It's tough because there's other houses. Well, th- that pool of buyers are a little bit higher acumen, right? They're, yeah. they're looking – they're, they're walking in. They're like, I don't want this, right? Yeah. 
They want mm-hmm. something that's turnkey. They're walking in. It looks good. You got to market it correctly, or else you're not going to get those buyers in those houses. And if a staging consultant can be very, very handy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and having somebody that with a professional eye. Not all sellers are into that because it's their house. The hardest thing for us, especially people that have lived there more than about five years, is getting them to realize your house is going to be a product for sale. Mm-hmm. You got to get rid of the emotional ties. Right. At two percent, we can keep your house. We, those people will just put it on the MLS. You can go pay to put it on the MLS yourself. Yeah. And that's why I tell them, well, if they're not going to do anything, you know, and then obviously with the contracts, you get in deep into negotiation and contracts, you can make people your commission is what I always say. 1%. I mean, if I'm not worth, if I can't get you an extra $5,000 right. or whatever it is, then pay somebody 2%. But I'm not only, when I'm marketing your property, like I said, we're trying to get the most qualified, ready and able buyers through it. And then when we go into negotiation, it's a process of let's weed out the offers that, first of all, are just trying to lock it up. Because mm-hmm. people will try to lock your property up and then an inspection period bail. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they just are trying to get an accepted offer, accepted offer, yeah. accepted offer, right? Not only let's navigate to you don't have to deal with that stress, but also let's get the money. Get the money. Maybe somebody sees one of those Facebook ads and says all of a sudden, well, my agent didn't send that property to me. Because not all... Not everybody's working with an agent either. Right. So if you're doing an open house on a Saturday or a Sunday, people say open houses don't sell houses. Yeah, they do. I disagree. Yeah. And not only do they do they help, you get 20 people through an open house. That are looking to buy houses. And one person there is serious. Yep. How, what do you think that offer is going to go? They're going to they're gonna write for real. Yep. You know? Yeah. So it's interesting. I, this is my opinion, guys. And to the audience, like, look, you could probably list your house yourself and sell it. You're not going to get, in my opinion, top dollar for it. You're not going to know, how, for the most part, you're not going to be able to negotiate properly because that, in my opinion, the agent today, they're not there to really as much sell the house. They're there to market it. They're there to, to make sure that you're protected on the contract. They're there to make sure that 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 all parties involved are organizing everything. Mm-hmm. Like There's a lot that goes in. A buddy of mine just bought a house uh, for sale by owner. I go, dude, you should probably have an agent on your end at least. And they're like, no, they don't want to have one, right? Um the whole process was a mess. He didn't know how to set up the purchase agreement. The purchase agreement was screwed up. Uh, they don't know about appraisal. They don't know about, about any of that. I have stuff. one right now. It's that crazy. They agreed to buy this condo it was for sale by owner a month ago, and we still. It's a four-page PA. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to fill that out for you. I'm not a real estate. Well, yeah, we get <laughs> asked know? to do that. So like, I'm like, like know, that's I'm not sending it through my DocuSign. Yeah. I'm not dude, doing any no of that. No way. Yeah. You guys want to fill this out? Go talk to an agent. Well, well we, we don't want to get one involved. Uh, Brokerages pay a lot of money uh, because of liability issues. Mm-hmm. Right. Errors and emissions, I pay it every month. You know, mm-hmm. There's things that we take the liability off the client. You're completely. a professional. They're, these are Our legal contracts. Yeah. They're, not, they're not just pieces of paper, yeah. people. Like They're legal <laughs> yeah. contracts. I related a lot to estate planning, right? You want to make sure your family's protected. You want to make sure your kids are set up right if something happens to you. You're not going to take the time, and you're not going to try to fumble through and, and do that yourself, right? You're not going to write your own. Some people do, man. But they're but fools. 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 Well, it's like self-operation. Right? You, you want to hire a professional you know? that's going to do that for you and make yeah. sure you're covered. And I make agree. Sure that it's like going on WebMD and learning <laughs> how to, you yeah. know. Yeah. Do not go on WebMD. Every no. time I go on there, I end up, <laughs> I'm having, I have a terminal illness. Like, man, I got like a yeah. little lump inside of me. Let's, yeah. let's pull it out. Salvatore's <laughs> looking, and he's like, dude, I think I've got it, man. I've got I've got the It's over. Like, Man. Yeah. It's not, it's not good. Come so, on, dude. Uh, yeah. you, did, you have said that before. Um, yeah. So, well, yeah. <laughs> negotiation. Let's go back to negotiation, yeah. too, because that's that's uh, that's something that every single real estate agent will say that they can do. Every single one. How I'm many, a professional negotiator. I'm, a, I'm the professional yeah. negotiator, yeah, right? I got you. Yeah, right. what, what people got to realize about the negotiation in a real estate contract traditionally is different than what most people think because there's a client. And an mm-hmm. agent, yep. then the agent to the agent, then yep. the agent back to the client. Mm-hmm. So as a real estate agent, who am I really talking to? The other agent. The other agent. Yeah. I can't, you know, a for sale by owner, if I'm talking to those, and usually those people are so stubborn, even whatever facts you have, oh. not always, you know, there's some that, that right. can do it, but a lot of times they think their property is worth more than it is. They don't want to pay a commission because of the X, Y, and Z. They're hard to access. It's hard to get my buyers through them because ah we can't do uh, we can do Thursday from one o'clock to two, 
Yeah. Otherwise, like, I'm going to Florida for the rest of the week. Exactly. <laughs> so you're not getting yeah. a big pool of buyers through those. No. Uh, but as far as the negotiation goes, a lot of people, especially when I talk to some agents, they want to be very, very bulldogish, and they think, oh, I'm a tough negotiator because yep. I can cuss at you and yell at you when you don't do something that I want. They're dicks. I mean, I was going to say it. Like, at the end of the day, people have always – responded better to people that have empathy for other for your situation yeah, and care absolutely. about you. Mm-hmm. So the best way to get your clients in a position is for that agent to think you really care about their position too. Yeah. It can be honest, it can be dishonest. So Andy, <laughs> I mean your actual love for them. For sure. But right. I mean I think when you definitely when have you're to nice, care. Yeah. When you're nice to people, Respectful. you get more. Yeah. Chris Voss, uh, he wrote a book uh, that's very, very good. I would highly recommend it for he was a CIA negotiator, hostage negotiator. And what he found is over the years, by using empathy and kindness, he got way more. Way more. Yeah. Then yelling and screaming. Well, I think waterboarding. Didn't in this, yeah, 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 waterboarding yeah. didn't work. In this business, you have, to, you have to stay level, yeah. right? You can't get too excited because things go awry. You can't get too down because there's always another one, right? Yeah. And I think people, especially some agents who maybe they do a lot of business, maybe they only got one and, you know, that's paying their bills – you know, if something blows up, it's like the end of the world. Like all of a sudden, you know, these the seller's gonna die because yeah. this isn't selling. It's like, dude, it's a death thing again. Yeah. It's not, not closing you're, Friday. You're They're not gonna, gonna die. die, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it'll, it'll, it'll close Monday, and, and life, everyone's gonna be alright. Life will. There's you no know, such come thing. On, there is no such thing as a real estate emergency. Uh, uh, I, one of the old school brokers told me that at Berkshire Hathaway at a different office. The only yeah. real estate emergency is when it's caught fire. When if your house <laughs> yeah. is on fire, that is definitely a real that would be an emergency. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, real quick, and I, I, you're one of like like your mentality on things is one thing that I always find interesting. Like when I talk to you, you've got like this really passion about you, and like so I want you to talk a little bit about like your like what. How do you get yourself in the right mental state every day to be successful? Because I think all things aside, you've had success in your career no matter where you've been. And I don't, I don't think that doesn't just tra- – like it, doesn't, it just doesn't work in sports. I think that translates in everything, right? So in your mind, like when you get up in the morning, or like how do you get yourself mentally ready for success? You know, it's like uh, Sal was even saying, even kills what I've always strived to have. Mm-hmm. No highs, no lows. When – in real estate, it's funny. Everybody wants. Everybody gets like top five percent trophies. Everybody they just <laughs> yeah. give them to everybody. Because well, because top one percent million agents out there. They don't everybody do gets their top one percent trophy. Yeah, people love trophies in this business. I, I, you know, you can pat yourself on the back, but I'm always looking to the next one. To yep. the next one. And in baseball, it was basically train training my brain on a daily basis to no matter what I felt like that day, how terrible or awful I felt. I knew if I did X, Y, and Z and just stayed the course, the next day would be easier. The next day would be better. If I went 0 for 4, the worst thing you can do in baseball is if you go 0 for 4 is to make it 0 for 8 and make it 0 for 10 and make mm-hmm. it 0 for 20. You're never going to get you're anywhere. Done. Right? Yeah, you're, you're in the what hole. you do is after you go 0 for 4, you have to figure out a way to get to the next day and know that you're going to get it. Just like what Sal was saying, you're going to lose a deal yep. once in a while. That buyer that you had under contract even yeah. went and bought with – the person at the mm-hmm. open house, yeah, you could go after that buyer. Or maybe you don't have them under contract, but you've been showing them, whatever. People can get mad, but what they don't realize is that agent's double-dipping them now, and they've done that to somebody else. Right. Like, they always look at it as poor me. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, like I'm a victim, right? Like, yeah. Uh, and you know something that you had told, told oh, us. The, the, we always use this, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Should have played better. Play better, dude. Right? And play I mean, better. Kind yeah. of the way I look at it. Oh man, you know this guy went with uh, his bank. You know I've been talking to him, but man, before he told me that, I didn't talk to him for two or three weeks. There right? you go. Should and play better. And you're not going to get them all. Yeah. So the person who needs that one deal to close for the month, their pipeline wasn't filled up. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, well, I probably <laughs> lose more deals than a lot of loan officers write. You know, yeah, which is, yeah, and that's the. I was thinking that yesterday, like, man, I lost six deals this past week. Yeah, but I still wrote seven. Exactly. You know, it's like if you're, it's not the worst. Look at it. You know, if you're not losing, you're not getting after it at all. I agree with that. If I'm not going to a listing appointment and not losing some, I'm not doing enough. That means you're not trying hard enough. If you if you don't fail in life, this is my like you got to fail to succeed. 
Oh, you have to. If there was no failure, there'd be no success. I mean, everybody would just succeed, right? Yeah. So you have to have failure in the equation of success. It's just there's no other way around it. Mm-hmm. And it's perception. So what, if failure is all perception. Failure is usually what we, we're feeling sorry for ourselves about. Because in this world, whether we like it or not, we're not that important. No, we nobody not. nobody <laughs> cares that much. Yeah, no one's going to be like, like uh, man, my grandpa was a mortgage broker, bro. He was yeah. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen, no. right? You know, no. so. But what, <laughs> if you want sympathy, you can you can dwell and you can give yourself sympathy. Somebody can maybe pat you on the back. It's gonna be okay. If the more of that you need, the less you're gonna go out and fail, and yeah. the less you're gonna go out and fail, the less the success, success you're, you're ever gonna. The less have. you're gonna win, right? So yeah. So what is failure really? Failure would say, like you said, I lost six deals, but I got seven. If you didn't lose six, if say you lost two, maybe you only wrote four. Right. Maybe right. you wrote three. Right. Well, I think you're not swinging the bat. And there are weeks where you'll write all 12, right? And then there's weeks where you'll lose them all. But I think uh, the the key to success in this business is creating the opportunities and then following up on them, right? Mm -hmm. So the more people you talk to, the more people you're getting out in front of, that's like planting the initial seed. And then you got to water it every day, no matter what. Some of those aren't going to grow, right? And there's just no getting around that. And some of them take so long to come to fruition. It's a lot of nurturing. You're kind of like... Maybe I should have found a different seed. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I put so much fertilizer and water on that one. Or you put all your time in yeah, that one. And you got to have you a lot be, of Man, careful. it died. It's a very, it's, it's a, it, you know, it's a very tough game to play. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. anything, you know, yeah. the more you're like, okay, this person's not serious at all. You'll, you'll be able to what I'll it do, out. Yeah. I'll call you in three months. Yeah, we'll talk you know, later, man. Like, I know that you're not even. And people use you in this business. Oh, they you think know? you're a social worker. Hey man, uh, you know? yeah. we need another yeah. pre-approval. They don't want to accept Quickens. Yeah. So do you find that people? And this is just uh, kind of off topic. Do you find people that you know what? hear Andy Dirks and they know Andy Dirks? They just want to talk to you. Uh, with my lead generation online, I get a lot of people that will sign up for my website. Yeah. That might, might be a twelve-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> just wants to hey, I try. Andy, will you yeah, sign hey, my baseball? Hey. Uh, I've I've pretty much nipped that. Uh, yeah. I don't drive people around in my truck. Yeah. I don't. You know. It's professional business. Yeah. If you're yeah. not serious, if you're not willing to get pre-approved as a buyer, I don't. Have, I, yeah, you got a lot of other things to do, man. Like I want. Once people are serious, I can put them in an amazing position to succeed. What they don't realize is I can't do a million things for you until you're ready. Like my, right. all my service, the service that I can provide, I'm I'm not just a guy that opens up doors, and that's what mm-hmm. I think a lot of times people want. Yeah, they'll say, "Well, I'm going to work with the agent that that sends the house that I want to me." Well, here's the problem with that. With all the technology and apps that buyers have now, you're going to see the property regardless of if I send it to you or not. Right. I'm going to try my best to send you everything that I can. It's out before you even see it half the time. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way to control that. I'm not sitting on my computer with one criteria waiting for that to pop. Well, people need to know that. Like, a real estate agent today, again, they're not probably not going to find you the house you're going to buy. It's what they do after you find the house. Or or they'll drive you to the house and open the door. But it's, again, it's what you do. Once they find the house, how do you negotiate? How do you set up the contract? How do you get the, do you get them to win the offer? Like, today, I think it's a lot easier to list a house than it is to get a buyer into a house. Yeah. Because it's, it, it, it takes a special skill right now to get someone into a house because it's it's competitive. That's yeah. the most competitive side. Um, speaking of that, I, I do, because we're running a little bit out of time, I do want to talk about uh, the refinance game uh, in our business. Sal has gone down to an 18 year low, mm-hmm. and the reason I'm saying that is because now all of a sudden you've got a lot of loan officers that have decided, oh, maybe I should. Talk to some agents and try to get into some purchases. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like it's very reactionary. It, it's yeah. like, oh man, yeah. like oh, this is a go- this is gone now. That's a big. That's a lot of money that's being well, sucked yeah. out of the business. And, and all of a sudden, you know, I was talking to a real estate agent the other day. They're like, man, my phone is blowing up with different uh, loan officers, and it's got to be annoying, right? No. But no. I, I never have an issue with the loan officer who tries to get a hold of me. Nice, because they're trying to get their business. Yeah, they're trying mm-hmm. to get their business on. You know what I what I do tell. People is I appreciate a phone call more than a yeah uh, Facebook message right. right you know if you're if you're too scared to call me yep and it's tough it's not easy uh, me calling people that I don't know because ev- I have yet to work with somebody that I know personally right which as a real estate agent who I've been doing it for almost over a year now in Detroit not quite about a year in Detroit 
all of my business has come from people I don't know. Yeah. That's not easy. That's not easy. No. Most 99% of realtors start out, they're doing a deal for their brother in law, their, you know, you don't their have cousins, their friends right. from high school, they're yep. all these different people that they've they've met face to face already. I have yet to do a deal with anybody that I know because my I just don't know that many people. You don't right. have a sphere here. It's I all don't. in Kansas, right? Yeah. You have to build one. And right? what people do is then they see how hard you work and then they refer you. You know, yep. and yeah. then just keep then you it. prove your worth right there, right? But well, uh, I don't. I don't have a problem with with loan officers calling yeah. me wanting to drive business. I, yeah, it's just, but it, but it is going to get more and more prevalent, though, in my opinion. Like, um, well, I think you'll see a shift, right? I mean, everyone. I mean, like, I w- I would say like a quarter of the people probably at some point in the Metro Detroit area thought like, man. Maybe I'll go work at Quicken. You know, I got a buddy yeah. who's making a ton yeah. of money there. Right. Yeah. So, but the cream rises. Yeah. Uh, the correct. the people who. Now we're in panic mode, you know, because all they did was refi, refi, refi. What they should have saw was interest rates are low, low, low. Everybody's refining when they're low, but when they go back up, That's it's going to take a while. In this business, yeah. you got to kind of look at the, towards the future. I, I firmly believe, like, where we are today, Sal, is a product of what we did a year well, it's ago. It's farming versus hunting, right? Yeah. And I feel like uh, it takes a lot longer to get going, but once you have it going, you know, it's it's only yours to screw up. Yeah, right. It took me it took me legitimately six months before I got to where I'm closing, closing, closing. Right, mm-hmm. six months, which is pretty of, quick in that in our business, by the that's way. Really but quick. six months of swinging the bat a lot, a lot of <laughs> yeah. So like you, open houses to a weekend, you <clears throat> name it, you know, right. and you, whatever I could do, banging on the phones, calling people, go reading to kids. Uh, the cool thing about real estate in these businesses is you can be involved in the community in a great way, and it's driving business at the same time. Yeah. So, you know, you can go to charity events, and you can uh, It's relationships. Go, yeah, you, you yeah. build relationships, which is fun. And then, like I said, I don't work with people that I know, but by the time I'm done working with them, I know them. Yeah. Which yeah. is cool. You get, a, you get to build relationships with a lot of different people. Well, that's the difference between a transactional type business and a relationship business. Yeah. Right? We're not in a transactional business, especially on the purchase side, real estate. Like you have to build relationships. We talked about this last week. I mean, if you aren't able to build good relationships with people, I mean, you're just not going to be successful in a lot of things that you do in life. And I think a lot of these refinance loan officers and other people in our industry, they're so transactional based, right? Yeah. And, and, and it's hard to build, you know, a reputation, a book of business, uh, you know, friends in the industry. It's like those, all, I feel kind of bad for a lot of these loan officers who spent so much time focused on refinance. Cause look, it was low lying fruit. There's yeah. a lot of money there, right? Yeah. It was a lot harder to think outside of the box and say, I'm going to start doing this other thing when there's all this money over here. But that, but not seeing that, I, I just, I, th- there's going to be a lot of like out of work loan officers. Well, you see yeah. our, right uh, now on Facebook, you know, that's what you started guys want, a new though. job. No offense yeah. to them. You want the, you want to then get the market the share. Yeah. 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 Same way in real estate I, right now. There's so many realtors. All the guys that are big now stuck it out in 2008. Right. That's it. That's all and they, they got so much market share because there wasn't a lot of people doing it. Right. I, I don't feel bad for those loan officers at all because, uh, to your point, you talk about what are you worth, right? Yeah. And, and how to prove your worth. Those loan officers, they didn't have the foresight to see what was happening. They were living in the transaction by transaction by transaction, getting their paycheck and, and taking trips to Vegas and, and wherever else and not having the foresight to seeing to see what's coming in the market to plan for it, right? And, and to get smart, right? Well, you guys, I don't feel bad for you guys are going to get blown up once this happens. What's you don't think Zillow's going to start their own brokerage? Everybody's starting their own brokerage, dude. You don't they already do. It. Yeah, I everybody. looked it up the other day, yeah. and they've got a, their own mortgage company. So, Zillow. A lot of these real estate agents don't. And they're just like they don't know how to generate their own leads. Right. They don't know how to generate their own business. Right. Mm-hmm. They pay somebody right. to shoot them the business. Yep. Which is, if you want to have a business that's got some longevity and some backbone to it, you have to learn to get your own business. Yeah. Whether, however you want to lead generate it. But if you're, if you're completely dependent on my phone's ringing because I'm paying somebody to make it ring, whoever's getting those leads like Zillow, yep. it's huge right now. You're paying them to, to, those, to, to those take you over. Money to. <laughs> those people, eventually that's going to run dry. Cause what Zillow is going to do is they're going to take those leads and yeah. find a way to convert them to make more money than they are by giving them to somebody else. Mm-hmm. You're, you're feeding the competition. Well, they already have a mortgage right? hard company. Work. And yeah, the yeah they got the mortgage it's, company. You know, it, it is kind of funny. I, I have just, like, found that out the other day. You know? Yeah. It's and a, it, Zillow is a licensed mortgage broker. And, you know, eventually they're just going to keep it all in-house. Why wouldn't they? 
Yeah, I but I, I firmly believe this, and this is my opinion. Um, and it's, maybe it's na- naive, but like, do, having a, a mortgage company is pretty complicated. I know, I know, brokerages that are opening their own. Keller Williams is doing their own. Zillow's doing their own. Redfin's going to do their own. I've got like, you know, people are are everyone's like seeing the money and like they're like, oh, I'm just going to do it. It's it's complicated. It's a complicated transaction, and you know, with even 16 years of experience, I still come up with, against things that is that I need to like solve for. Right? Mm-hmm. It's that, not even the transaction though. Just opening your own mortgage company beyond the transaction before you ever get to writing a mortgage is complicated. Getting mm-hmm. licensed, all the compliance as I like we're it. So over regulated. I like it because I think there's gonna be so many like people that enter the market that aren't good. I believe this. Like. I don't think that Redfin's a better agent than you are, right? Yeah, I don't they, think they right? pay them to do open houses. And right, thing. it's wild. It's that's wild. a whole different game. Wow. But I don't think they they do a better job than the actual agent that's going to be on the streets with the people and know has a sphere of a, if, community in the community. Like you get, get your feet in it. I just don't see that happening. So I think it actually makes you look better. Yeah, and agents, agents and lenders, who go to those types of <laughs> generation tactics, whatever it is. And don't have kind of their own business build up. It's maybe they weren't good enough to build yeah, their own, sure so they hard. rely on something else like a Redfin to why give would them a you, steady yeah, paycheck. Why would you go there, right? Because when maybe you're working there's... strictly off commission, it puts some pressure on you. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta produce, or you're you could die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like the, it's, yeah. it's produce or death. <laughs> produce. produce or death. You're gonna you get stoned better. in the courtyard, well, especially <laughs> if you're married man. with kids. I mean, yeah. my, yeah. I, yeah, my wife Talk about is the pressure, expensive. man. Wives, what if it wasn't for my wife? All truth be You'd told, be a bum. I'd be a bum. I wouldn't need to make <laughs> as much money. She changed your world. I could get by with thirty thousand dollars a year. I'd live in I'm a the same boat. No, you couldn't, I'm bro. in the same boat. I mean, literally playing Call of Duty. All Sal, if Sal got married, he'd be a multimillionaire. I'm telling you, you would be for <laughs> sure. <laughs> for sure. So, um, yeah, man. I mean, man. look. I think that I think the overall <laughs> theme, in my opinion, is um, service professional uh, people that know what they're doing will always prevail. Right, even back in the day, like, like when Zillow first came out, oh, that's gonna hurt our business. So, you know, they're gonna be listing everything. What, what am I gonna do now? They're gonna be showing all the. It didn't. Uh, it, did, it didn't. You're right. It, <laughs> it didn't crush the, the the business. You just found a way to use it. If you yeah, can't, you sure. can't. And what I tell people, even when we have our meetings and stuff, you don't want to fight people with private jets on this. Zillow is so big; they're not going anywhere. No, find a way around them. They're fine. Right. Like right. they're gonna get. They have their little or niche use and it stuff. To your I advantage. think you. I think in, with anything, right? Like you, ha- you can't be blind to threats, right? But at the yeah. same time, you can't worry about them and be be afraid, right? Yeah. You yeah. can't like not go outside and you know live in a <laughs> shelter because you hear talks of a bomb coming. This whole right? fear thing, living in fear, is driving me nuts. You know what I keep hearing? Oh, the the market's gonna crash. Uh, yeah, everybody gonna, thinks um, the market's. Um, everybody's got a crystal ball yeah. to the negative. And if always. it does, right, it, it will. But there's well, a benefit to having a fear as well. I, f- I feel I'm a strong believer that there is something that is a healthy fear, right? Almost a, a healthy paranoia. Well, it kind of pushes you and drives you. There's a to difference. Go to the next level. There's a difference yeah. between 100%. a gambler and a person that wants to live positively. Right. Fear, I think it's it's the recognition. Fear. Hel- yeah. There's right? a healthy it's fear, and there's re- like the roof is falling in. Yeah. It's recognition that you're mortal. Right, hundred percent. Like yeah. that will probably insulate you from complete failure, but you can't let that also hinder your like uh, aspirations to do something. Because if you try to do this and it fails, all of a sudden you're gonna die. Right? Like the, that was the most yeah. eloquent yeah. couple was, sentences I've ever heard that you say. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of interesting because Coffee. you had uh, you had a lot of success, um, you know, before your transition, you, professional athlete. When you transitioned, I mean, obviously that was a kind of a big leap. Did you have an initial success, or was it a struggle? And do you think that your local, struggle, do you think that your local celebrity helped or hindered you in the transition? It was it was a struggle that I knew wasn't going to last long, just because it, when I get into something, I go into like Andy Land. Y- yeah, and you, I, you I get pretty laser. I get it's pretty. It sounds like a theme park. And yeah, it's yeah. my wife calls it Andyland. I go off into these like she's like this guy is out of his mind sometimes. <laughs> I want to I want to visit. Sometime. Yeah, <laughs> but it was definitely a struggle. You know, when you local celebrity, nobody to my knowledge has used me strictly because I played for the Detroit Tigers. 
But I have had people say, you know, I didn't want to use them because that would be kind of cliche to just go use the tiger, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You're I'm like, good. Dude, 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 dude. Right. Yeah, yeah, fine. No, no, yeah. you can use me. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. About Protect, call, me. call me Bill. Yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. Bill. But I want, I want people to know me as a real estate agent, not a tiger. So I don't use it in my listing presentations, anything like that. You shouldn't. I, I, agree, not, I agree with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm a strictly a professional real estate agent. I like That's that. Why I, was, I was wondering I like if it hindered you because... There's a lot of ignorant people that are like, oh, he's a, well, I a get, dumb jack I athlete. Tons, what does he know about selling my house? I right? still get tons of haters. For sure. Look yeah. at this guy. He yeah. was, oh, now he's just selling real estate. Because a lot of people think real estate agents are like these weird salesmen that yep. n- nobody likes you until they need you. Yeah, right. well, yeah. yeah, I mean, you get lumped into the category of yeah. attorneys. Oh, trust me. We're well, loan officers. You know, we're scum, yeah, dude. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're, like, we're like a half Uneducated, a step yeah. above used car salesmen, yep. maybe. Uh, right. Barely. Barely. Yeah. But once people uh, talk to you and know you and they realize, hey, he's right. legit. He's yeah. not just. Yeah, people, the haters, you still use one, right? And yeah. Well, I love the elite if, and everyone else, and it's like we all got our place. Yeah. You if know, people aren't hating on you though. You're not doing something right. Yeah. I think that you know anyone, whether it's a loan officer, realtor, like whatever you want to do, like you can easily f- do it if you know the path to get there. Right. Like everyone always is like, man, I want to do this. I want to close fifty loans. I want to buy this. I want to date this person. Right. Yeah. And they uh, they just focus on that, but they don't realize the climb up, right? The and path's available. You have to be willing to put in the work. And that's why I love like the brokerage I'm at in Berkshire Hathaway in the Clarkson office. Yeah. There's agents that do a lot of business right. yeah. for just being an individual even. Right. right. You know, if you're an individual and you're doing twelve million a year every year, Solid. you you found a something mm-hmm. that works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're accessible. They're not like oh, I'm too big for you, too good for you. They'll talk to any of the new agents coming in, and if you're not willing to like take advantage of, of people that are willing to help mm-hmm. you and then appreciate them for it, I think that's what makes people go from, you know, takes your business from it took me six months to build to I'm going to do $5 million to I'm going to do ten in a shorter period of time. You mm-hmm. have to learn from other people. Well, I think everybody needs a coach, no matter where you are. No, like LeBron has a coach, right? Yeah. Barely, uh, but he has <laughs> like every everybody has a coach. Like Michael Jordan had a coach. Like every great athlete, every great person, no matter what what level you're at, there are things that you do that you don't realize, or you you could learn from other people, no matter what it is. And I think it's crazy for people to like not take the help. You have to have education constantly, constantly. Even yeah. like yeah, when I got in, all I did. Was because you, when you get your license as a real estate agent, you don't know anything about the business. You learn some of the legalities and just you know standardized tests, whatever. But what I did right away was try to attach myself to people that were successful right. and got there relatively quickly at some point. Right. It, it's funny because it's so so easy to be a hater. It's so easy to be a hater, right? You're like, oh man, yeah. that guy's doing twelve million. He sucks. I hate that guy. Yeah. But <laughs> right. Well, that's your but own insecurity. That's like an, right. It, that's a well. They got lucky. They got lucky. Yeah. That's what. <laughs> but no, like you have, gave you have to look yeah. up to someone, or you'll never be better than yourself. That's a right? fact. Yeah. So and there's there's platforms online. If you if you have trouble interacting with people in the office, you can go online and buy a class. Mm-hmm. I bought Joshua Smith, the uh, realtor out of Arizona. I yeah. bought his little. Uh, it was like twelve hundred bucks. So much content. He's overboard with. He talks a lot and he's got content. Yeah. But I learned how to do an open house. Yeah. From that. Yeah. And I used it. And this is a guy who's one of the biggest agents in Arizona. Uh, you know, why wouldn't I learn from him? Right. You right. Know? So it's interesting because, I mean, everyone has a coach. And I feel like a lot of times coaches are, it's a very unrewarding or, uh, position, right? Or it's rewarding, but it's very un. Some, what, are you, what are you saying right now? So who in in your transition who uh, who were some of your biggest influences in your in your biggest coaches and uh, transition over? Who'd you learn the most that. from? And who in real estate? Yeah, uh, Donna Sanford. She does thirty million a year wow. with like two admin people. That's it. She's she's, she's a monster. That's yeah. a monster. Uh, Lynn Avey. She does like ten to twelve just by herself. Just yeah. by herself. Totally by herself. Yeah. Barb McClure, same way. Like agents, these people, they have experience, and they're willing to give out whatever knowledge they have for free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Free. Yeah. yeah. I and think. then that, you know, the program <clears throat> I took with the Joshua Smith training, people are people hate on him. I'm like, same way with uh, Jeff Glover. If I want to learn how to do a cold call, 
you better believe I'm going to go knock on Jeff Glover's office door and do say, it, yeah. how do I make a cold call? Yeah, he's pretty right. good. Because he's been doing it forever with success. Yep. A lot of people hate on that guy, but I think, well, dude, like it, anybody, they're going to get haters because he does a lot of business. I think right. it's right. no one saw him build it. it, right? Yeah. No. No one sees you build something. Yeah. They only see what you got. Yeah. yeah. And so then all of a sudden, so they're up to... here, they're like, oh, he sucks. I heard he's a bad dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they don't even dude, know Shut up. You've never met anybody that knows him, dude, right? Right. Right. So, Jeff, if you're listening, we don't think you're a bad dude. Jeff, you're not a bad dude. Yeah, just give us some money. Just if <laughs> help me on a billboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, can we partner on a billboard? Yeah, dude. man. Uh, anything you want, Jeff. We love you. That is funny. But you know, that's just anything you're gonna do. And I think as an agent, you got to decide how you're gonna lead generate. You can't do them all. No. If you're gonna, if you want to mm-hmm. get into cold calling, that takes a special type. That's mm-hmm. the, probably the hardest way to lead generate in the business. Yeah. Nobody wants to do that. Yeah, but it works. Yeah, it mm-hmm. works because no, nobody's good at it. Yeah. So if you're good at something that nobody else is good at, then you're gonna be yeah. good at it. And persistence. Anybody getting into young business, you got to be persistent. No, mm-hmm. it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah, you so got to be you, okay with hearing the word no. Yeah. So a let, lot. Andy, yeah. Andy, let me ask you this: for for a young aspiring real estate agent that thinks that's coming into this business wide eyed and all excited, what was that? A rebel. Oh, wide eyed and all excited. <laughs> A little early. He doesn't need the rest of that. That's really weird. Uh, Why not? Like, you know what I mean? They're they're getting into the business. They're like, man, I I, like I'm just starting out. What advice, other than you know, obviously coaching and all that, but like, what advice are you are you going to give that person to to help them succeed? The first thing you got to think is, do I know a lot of people in the area I want to work? If you do, leverage them first. Yep. Because you already met them. The hardest thing to do is to meet people. They're not going to buy or sell right away, but you're going to create a pipeline. For the, the longevity of your business. Then the next thing is, how do I meet people that I don't know that want to buy and sell houses, right? And there's certain tax t- tactics. You can do mailers. How much initial investment do you want to make? The beauty of real estate, you can literally start with nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, get some kind of database to where you have the people in a system that you don't have to think about hitting them up. Yeah. Because there's no way. You, you're going to get to a point at the beginning, you can do a lot of stuff, like the busy work, and everybody wants to do the busy work. Uh, but don't worry about your website. Don't worry about like the glitz and glamour yet. Start slow and build and do an open house as many as you can. Yeah. Constantly. 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 And a lot of people do four open houses in a month and they think, oh, I didn't get any business off of it. Do you need to do eight then? Yeah. You know, do eight. Yeah. And then what do you do? How do I get people to sign into my open house? You know, how do I present my open house? I put out like 30. Signs in places that let me put out a lot of signage. Yeah. I want people to know when they come to my open house, I'm working harder than any other agent out here. Right. Mm -hmm. And they say, wow, that's a lot of signs. I say, yeah, it is. (laughs) They're like, who do you have put them out? I say, I do. (laughs) Every single one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And then they can just call me. Yeah. Because I am looking to expand a little bit. Are you really? Currently, yeah. All right. Call Andy. Call me. I'll help you out. (laughs) And knowledge, like I said, I'm an open book. Yeah. Just like the mentors that I've had in the business so far. If if you're not willing to give back, you, you're not a very successful person. I agree mm-hmm. with that. And on that, that is our show, boys. How do people get a hold of you? There you go. Uh, my cell phone number is all over the internet, man. Andy Dirks, you can look it up, 248-515-5975. Call or text me. My emails get backed up. So so everybody's emails. If, I have 4,000 emails. If, in another words of wisdom, if you're trying to communicate with somebody just strictly via email, you're not that serious about getting in touch with them. I would agree with that. Email is my the worst. Email. a great note to end. It's at. the worst form of communication. They Salvatore. go bing, bing, bing. Text is everything. Text, text me, man. Text because I'll call read that. me or call me. Yeah, call don't, me, call me. Fat thumbs, man. And don't leave me a voicemail. Just the last thing I'm going to say: if you call my phone and you leave a voicemail that says "call me back," I'm going to kill you, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> because. I'm already seeing that you called. <laughs> yeah. I don't need a voice message that says, call me back. Let me know what you want because I'm not calling you back. Yeah. So yeah. If you do that, I'm not calling I you back. I hate leaving voicemails, man. No, don't leave a voicemail. Unless me. it's a f- the first time I'm calling someone, Yeah. I usually w- will just hang up and then text, hey, real quick, X or whatever. Because you're an adult. You know? yeah. You're an adult. And my gra- my eight, my grandma's 80, 84 or so now. God bless her She can heart. text. <laughs> wow. Everybody can text, right? Uh, That's good. It's not like you're missing out on a pool. My mom can't. My dad talks to text. There you go. And often it will say something wrong, and then he'll have to re-talk, and then it's... Yeah. uh, yeah. My mom's super foreign, so, like, words are, like, all... Like, you can't tell what she's writing, so I just, you know, I'm like... And they've talked to text doesn't work because she's got an accent. Man. So she just... Yeah, so I just don't talk to her. 
<laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next week. We love you all. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. I just don't talk to